This is Prince Hanley coming to you today with 100,000 watts of pure love. I want to talk to you today about the secret. Do you know your goals for God every day when you get up in the morning? Or do you have to struggle mentally to interfuse him with your daily schedule? Maybe you're a housewife or a businessman or a construction worker. Whatever your vocation in life, your real job fulfilling the occupational part of your ministry, or more correctly, God's ministry through you. You will never know this until you have spent a life-defining period, either alone with God, or in the case of a busy mother, in a time of consecration with God. Your spiritual occupation will define your life goals, both major and minor, and will help you in your decision-making processes, both major and minor, both long-term and daily. After you begin operating in your spiritual occupation, the Lord will from time to time revise or add to your responsibilities as you develop and show proof to Him of your successful stewardship. You can read Matthew chapter 25. This is why we need to have times of refreshing that the Bible mentions. You must take off the wraps when you're seeking direction from God, brothers and sisters. Take off the wraps and get God's instructions for your life and spiritual occupation. Don't be afraid to think big. Realize that God may have something in mind for you that you have never considered or thought of. That's where obedience comes into play. Also, do not share your instructions from God with other people to get feedback. If you know it's God, and if it lines up with the Word of God, do it. Lots of people have been led off the path of the will of God for their life by weird people, and even by two or three confirmations of a wrong thing by weird people. By weird people, I'm talking about people who have no real productivity in their lives, but who are always prophesying falsely to other people. This is why you need to start every day by reading and communicating with God in His Holy Word and then in prayer. God has thoughts above your thoughts. His thoughts are not your thoughts. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is where, again, brothers and sisters, it's important to take off the wraps. Do not just think outside the box. God is not limited to three dimensions. Our Heavenly Father is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Here is where many people miss the mark. Obey. We may be students of the Word, some even professors of theology in graduate schools, in seminaries. However, we may miss the mark, and missing the mark is equated with sin. We can be obedient in lifestyle and witness. However, when God directs us to take a definitive lifestyle-changing move, are we obedient? Isaiah tells us that the Word of God will not return void. It will cause you to be productive in your spiritual occupation, and it will make the way for your provision. You will be productive, and God will provide for you. And Isaiah tells us in chapter 55, verses 10 and 11, For as the rain comes down, and the snow comes down from heaven, and does not return there, but they water the earth, and make it bring forth in bud, that the earth may give seed to the sower, and that's for production, and 
bread to the eater. That's for provision. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. Spend time in the word of God. It won't return void. It will accomplish in your life and in the earth, the nations of the world, what God pleases. God's word will prosper in the purposes for which God sends it. Why not be a channel for his holy word? The word of God shall not return to him void, but it shall accomplish what he pleases, and it shall prosper in the thing for which he sends it. The Hebrew word void used in this passage is racham, and it means empty, without fruit or productivity. So if you want to know your spiritual occupation, and thereby make it a lot easier for your day-by-day decision-making, if you want to know life at the fullest, the abundant life Jesus promised you, and if you want to be productive, and see the provision of God in your life, then spend time in God's Word. Spend time in the Word of God for your sake and for the sake of God. What would you think if your children were so busy working, but they never spent time with you? Many people in ministry are doing the same thing, busy about God's work, but spending very little time with God. When we do this, we not only lose out on fellowship with the greatest person in the universe, but we lose out on our own productivity and provision. Spend time in God's Word. Things will begin to click in your life. You'll be in the center of God's will. God will provide for you. You will be productive. You will have the joy of working at your real job, the occupational ministry God has chosen for you before the foundation of the world. Remember, the thoughts of God are higher than your thoughts, but you have to know His thoughts. The secret is in his word. This is Apostle Talk, and this is Prince Hanley coming to you with 100,000 watts of pure love.